Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp and welcome to another video on the series Advanced Development for Grasshopper. In this video, I would like to go back to the topic of classes versus structures and I would like to dig deeper, a little deeper into why this difference and in which ways it manifests technically, okay? Because it just so happens that Rhino actually mixes them both. It mixes structure, structures as a data for simpler geometry types, points, vectors, circles, that kind of stuff. And it uses classes a lot for more complex data types, such as curves, such as surfaces, B reps, etc., etc. And um, there are a few differences that justify why this uh, classification makes sense. And I would like to touch upon them right now. As we discussed in previous videos, in general, in a very high level way, I would like you to think of structures as lightweight versions of classes. What that means is that structures as a way of representing data are typically used when that data that we're representing is somehow very simple to represent numerically. So for example, vectors is just three numbers, points is just three numbers, a circle is a point and a number. So they're actually quite straightforward simple implementations and um, and there are reasons why structures are better for those because of memory where they're allocated how fast they are to copy paste etc etc so that's one thing whereas classes are data structures that are typically reserved for more complex data types so curves have a lot of information like for example nerves curves they have the knots they have the domain they have the parameters they have the control points they have the weights they have like a lot of stuff and that's just curves. So imagine surfaces, which is the same thing in two dimensions, plus trimming information. Then there's B reps, which is collections of surfaces and edges and trimming information. So there's a lot of stuff. So their numerical representation is actually quite complex. And that's why the classes are a better data structure to represent them. But who cares about this? Like, if they were identical, nobody really would care, or for us, it would not be important. Turns out that there's a couple things that on, in the way structures and classes behave, that uh, when we're writing code, if we're not aware of these differences, we may start getting behavior that we don't expect. And that's why I want to record this video in particular. And one of the main differences, perhaps the biggest one between structures and classes, is that structures, are value types, whereas classes are reference types. And what that means is going to be easier to explain if I show you an example of a behavior that might be unexpected. So let's go to Rhino. And in Rhino, I have this um, grasshopper file where I started creating a vector, okay? And I have fed this vector to a C sharp script component. And this C sharp script component is going to output two vectors. All right, now the example that I'm going to do is that I'm going to first create a vector. So all the examples I'm going to be doing are going to be about copying data, all right? Which perhaps is a better way of illustrating this problem. Let me create the first vector that is going to be lowercase v1, all right? Which is going to be a simple copy of the vector that is coming is as an input. So whatever we have in v1, it's just going to be a copy of what came in as an input, right? Now, after we do that copy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original vector that came in into the uh, component and I'm going to unitize it, all right? So I'm going to modify the vector that came in and I'm going to shrink it or extend it to make it one unit long, all right? But I'm doing that, remember, after I copied it in the first place. So V1 is before. And then after I unitize the vector, I'm going to copy it a second time. I'm going to create a second copy V2, and that's going to be vector V after I unitize it, correct? So once I have done, I'm just going to do some output here. And I'm going to say the output of the component capital V is going to be equal to the variable that I copied here at the beginning, V1. And V2 is going to be equal to that other, that other variable that I declare afterwards. So 
Now, here's my question to you. What does your intuition tell you about this vector and this vector? So, is this vector v1, is it an unit vector or not? And then, is vector 2, is it an unit vector or not? What do you think? I'm going to give you five seconds to think about this. Tick tock, 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 tick tock. Well, um, we don't need to speculate that much. We can actually see this in real life. So I'm going to hit play. And as you can see, the output of V1 is the same original component, no changes, the same original vector. And the output of V2 is the vector that looks like it's unitized. So actually, if I say, for example, let me make this one vector that is 10 units long and the other one is, you see that this one, the second one is clearly unitized. So we can see that the behavior that you obtained here is very clearly that vector one is a copy of the vector when it was not unitized. We did unitize it afterwards. And then vector two is a copy of the same vector after it was unitized. And that's what we're seeing here. Okay. Now, whatever your intuition was, there's no right or wrong here because depending on where you're coming from, this may feel natural because, hey, I copied it when it wasn't, uh, when it wasn't unitized and then I copied afterwards when it was unitized. So this feels natural to me. But if you're coming from a CS background, maybe this doesn't feel natural to you because we're used to other behaviors. It doesn't matter. So with vectors, this behavior that you have seen is how it works. But now let me show you what would happen if we did a similar operation, but with a curve, which instead of a struct, just like uh, vectors, instead of a struct, a curve is actually a class. So for example, I have a curve that I have brought in from Rhino, and I can see that as we discussed previously, this curve has whatever domain, zero from zero to 20 something, something, all right? So what I'm going to do is I have this component where I can, I'm taking in the curve and I'm going to output two different curves. And I'm going to follow a very similar process. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to leave this room for outputs here. And I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to copy this curve and I'm going to say lowercase c1 is going to be equal to the curve that is coming in as an input. All right. All good. This feels natural, right? So now after that, I'm going to take the domain of the curve and I'm going to change it to a new interval from zero to one. So I'm kind of reparameterizing the domain of that curve. And then after I do that, I'm going to create a second variable called C2. And that C is going to be a copy of the curve after I have changed the domain of the curve. All right. And now let's see what we get out of here. So you probably see where I'm going with this, right? So what do you think is going to be the outcome of this operation? I'm going to give you another three seconds. Tick tock, 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 tick tock. <laughs> I need, I need some sound effects too for, for this. Can someone contribute some sound effects for this? So let's see what the result is going to be. If I hit play, turns out that the result, the outcome of this component is two curves, both of them being uh, reparameterized, which may seem a little weird. I think I'm on the side where I felt that this was natural when I started learning how to code and I felt that this was odd. And But let's review this. So what is happening here? I did copy C1. I did copy this curve before I changed the domain. And then C2, I change, I copied it after I changed the domain. So this one feels natural to me, but this one, it feels like it should have the original domain because when I copied it, it still was not reparameterized. Okay. Again, whether if this feels natural to you or not, doesn't really matter because it is what it is. Okay. Um, now to me, when I first learned how to code, this part, this one was the one that didn't feel natural and the one that I was puzzled about a little bit. And then very soon I learned that the problem or the opportunity here, because this is actually an advantage if you know how to harness this, the problem or the opportunity was that 
struct types like vectors are types that work uh, are types that are called value types whereas data structure classes such as for example curves are called reference types and the behavior of how assignment i was using the word copying but that's not the the reality the behavior of how assignment works if you if it is a value type or if it is a reference type it's very different and let me illustrate this with an example to explain what was going on under the hood so let's go to the whiteboard in the whiteboard we are going to describe the process that we did before we have a vector whatever v we started with this vector and i said the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to copy i'm going to make the first copy of this vector okay and then what happened under the hood is that because vector is a struct and it's a value type what got assigned so what got copied were if you will all the parameters and all the data that was inside of the vector but not the vector itself give me a second give me a second so what got copied were the values all right now after i made the first copy remember i unitized the vector and then after i unitized the vector i made a second copy at that point the values the xyz values of the vector had changed and what got copied to the second vector were the updated values of the vector at that point but again not the vector itself so that's why what i ended up with was with vector one with a particular xyz from before unitization and then a second v2 with another set of particular values after being unitized okay because everything was copied or assigned by values now what is the opposite behavior or what is the difference with what happened when we were working with classes well we have the initial curve okay and then what we did was we wanted to make a first copy of the curve however because classes are reference types and this is derived from the fact that classes are more complex they have more data lots of numbers whatever right so because classes are more complex structures when we assign them when we copy them when we pass them between functions what we pass what we copy what we assign is not the values that are living inside of the curve what we're actually passing is what's called a reference to whatever that original curve is living inside of memory think of as a pointer an, an address so what gets passed is some kind of alphanumeric sequence that just says the original curve is living somewhere in memory so go there whenever you look at c1 just go there and fetch data from that that, that place this is because class types again because they're more complex they're typically more heavy they're typically heavier they have a bigger memory print so when we assign them or we copy them to avoid over over to avoid like memory consumption etc what we basically do is we copy a pointer to where they're living in memory so in this case as opposed to what we did before we're not copying the values but we're copying the object itself a reference to the same object and then when after this what we did was we changed the domain of the original curve okay and then after that we wanted to create a second copy and then when that second copy happened it was it was copied exactly the same as the first one what was copied was not the values of the new curve with a new domain no what was copied was that address the same address actually that was pointing to the same place where the original curve lives in memory the result of this is that now c1 and c2 what they are is that they're not new objects with new information what they're simply is they are copies of the address the memory pointer that contains the actual information of the curve so basically c c1 and c2 the three of them are looking at the same memory slot 
where the information is contained. And that is the reason why after we copied C1, when we made changes to C, when we changed the domain, because C1 is looking at the same place in memory as C, and C2 is also looking at the same place in memory as C, the changes that we made inside of C are now visible and are shared by C1 and C2. Because again, C1 and C2 have no information. What they have is a, an address to where they should go and look for information. What was copied was not the values that represent the curve, but a pointer to where that curve is in memory. That is the difference between reference types, which are what classes are, and value types, which are what the way structs behave. And this is the main difference that we will see when working with, oh, oh sorry, <laughs> classes here. Um, this is the main difference that we will see when working with structs or with classes, that as we, oops, sorry, that as we copy them or as we assign them to different values, for structs, when we assign, we're basically implicitly copying, copying a new instance with new values, and that, but, and then after that, they become separate entities. Whereas with classes, when we do assignment by reference, what we're basically saying is, can you please make C1 look at the same place as C, as plain C? And can you please make C2 look at the same place as C, and therefore the same as C1? And that's why any change that I make to C after will affect the values of a variable that was declared before C1, which is the part that I found a little counterintuitive when I first started, but over experience and learning, I have now in TVRES. Okay. This idea, values versus references, works for assignment, but it also works for function declaration. So when I send a class to a function, the class can change the value of that function. Whereas if I send a struct to a function and the function changes the struct, that those changes will not um, will not be, will not have effect on the original object. Same thing, all right? There's a few other minor differences. For example, um, class objects can be null, whereas struct objects, I believe they cannot be null. They have to have a value of initialize. Uh, there are differences about where they are stored in memory, etc. But for us, in practical terms, this is the most important one. The idea that if I copy an object and I modify afterwards, I may modify the original one that I copied beforehand. In in terms of classes, all right? So keep that in mind as you move forward because this is a topic that may lead to small confusions as you start becoming, as you start writing more and more complex code, all right? And as much as you can, just try to be mindful about what type are you using when you're working with B reps, surfaces, curves, vectors, whatever, just to keep in mind the behavior that you may expect, okay? All right, that was all. That was structures versus classes in the C-sharp programming language and with specific applications here in the world of Rhino Common within Grasshopper. Okay, keep those in mind um, for your, um, for your com com complex um, C-sharp workflows, okay? Uh, okay, let's move on to the next topic in this series. But in the meantime, maybe if this was useful, consider subscribing to this channel liking this video, uh, leaving a word, etc., etc. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.